I do want to address everybody in the audience and, and thank you all for being here with us today. But um, I hope everyone can, can listen carefully. Um, there are so many folks who wish to speak and who feel very strongly about this bill. And we're really happy that you're here to share your thoughts. However, to keep this moving and um, when we return later on tonight, if we could just uh, uh, adhere to a couple guidelines. First, as everyone was told when signing up to testify, please do keep your comments limited to two minutes. Um, we will be keeping time and we'll give you notice when your time has expired. I will call two people down um, at, at one time. So there's two chairs up here. So please, um, when your name is called, come down to sit so that you're ready to speak promptly when it's your turn. And then next, when testifying, um, please do keep your comments limited to the content of the bill and the amendment and refrain from speaking to personalities and motivations. Um, and uh, please be respectful to members of our staff um, on the committee and other testifiers and members in the audience. We, um, we again appreciate you joining us here to share your thoughts. And um, with that out of the way, Chair Stevenson will move that House File 5274 be re-referred to the State and Local Government and Finance Committee. Chair Stevenson. Would you like to move the, and describe the A4 amendment? Madam Chair, I'll move the A4 amendment, which puts the bill in the shape I'd like the committee to consider it. It clarifies a number of pieces of language, and I'll speak to that more when I introduce the bill, but it's a clarification amendment. All right, um, all in favor of the author's A4 amendment to get the bill in the shape he would like, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion prevails and the A4 amendment is adopted. Chair Stevenson, to your bill as amended. Madam Chair, members, there have been many misunderstandings about what this bill does or what it is attempting to do. So let me start out by clearly stating what we are trying to achieve with this bill. First, we want to reverse the Racing Commission's decision last week and make clear that historic horse racing slot machines are not permitted at our state's tracks. Second, we want to close a loophole in state law that allows for stadium style card games. And third, we want to clarify the jurisdiction of the Racing Commission to ensure that we don't end up right here again in the future. Now let me be clear about what this bill is not intended to do. It is not intended to change anything about actual horse racing in Minnesota. It is not intended to restrict the type of bets people can place on horse racing. It is not intended to stop or alter any kind of horse racing that is currently legal in Minnesota. In fact, this bill isn't intended to do anything at all to real live horse racing. It is also not intended to prohibit any type of card game that is currently being played at the card clubs at the tracks aside from the stadium style card games. I've heard from many folks that the bill language as introduced would have a broader impact on the operation of the tracks than the intention I just described. The author's amendment was just adopted was designed to address those concerns. But if folks think the amended language is still broader than the goals that I articulated, if folks think it prohibits things aside from historic horse racing slot machines or stadium style card games, then I encourage you to come and talk to me about it. I'm open to further discussions and clarifications. We only want to address historic horse racing slot machines, stadium card games in the jurisdiction of the Racing Commission and nothing else. Some folks have accused me of having it out for the tracks. That's not true. I've got no problem with the tracks. I do have a problem with the Racing Commission going beyond its statutory authority, but I've got no problem with the tracks. I've been to the tracks many times. They're a good asset to our community, and I hope they continue to be a good asset to our community for a long time. We've had a good discussion about historic horse racing slot machines in this committee last week, so I won't repeat myself too much on that. Uh, I think these slot machines are not lawful at the tracks. I think the Racing Commission took an unlawful action last week when they approved them, and this bill corrects it. We discussed the Alcohol Gambling Enforcement Division letter last week, but to remind members, the staff review, and these are civil servants, not political employees, appointees, concluded that historic horse racing slot machines are slot machines, that they are not paramutual, and that they are unlawful gambling devices under Minnesota law. Accordingly, they should not be at the tracks. The other subject this bill addresses is stadium style card games. What's that? By way of background, the tracks are allowed to have a card club under Minnesota statute 240.30. Uh, Subdivision eight of that statute is titled limitations. And it says that a card club can only have a maximum of 80 tables. That limit has been placed since 2012, before which it was 50 tables. The problem is there's no definition of a table in state law. 
If you've ever been to a casino or a card club, you might think table is a self-explanatory term. I think we can probably all picture a blackjack table with a dealer, seven, up to seven participants around. But technology has changed the game. Interblock technology allows one table with one human dealer to serve many, many additional players. Instead of players sitting at the traditional table with real cards being dealt to them, players sit at a video terminal with digital images of the cards dealt by the dealer where video images of the dark cards dealt by the dealer are displayed. Here's how one Minnesota track describes it. Play community card blackjack where dealers deal their cards while players bet place their bets from their very own PlayStation. This innovative gaming platform is comprised of high definition LCD display at individual PlayStations and a dealer assist blackjack table. This form of blackjack gives players more hands per hour and lower buy-ins. Where a traditional table is limited by the space available for players to play, stadium-style card games have no such limitation. Not only that, but players can play multiple hands at once. So this technology renders the limit table limitation in Minnesota statute meaningless. The legislature wouldn't have put a table limitation if it didn't intend for it to mean something, and the Racing Commission shouldn't render a statute passed by the legislature meaningless. If we want to raise the number of tables at a card club, as we did in 2012, we should do it by statute, not by an unelected commission. The Racing Commission has proved stadium card game tables with 11 player terminals, each of which can have three card hands of cards being played at a time. So that's a total of 33 hands being played off of one dealer. That's more than four times the capacity of a traditional table, which only allows seven hands at a time. So this bill corrects two overreaches by the Racing Commission and attempts to clarify their jurisdiction so we don't end up in this mess again. I will add that I think it's probably time for us to examine how gambling is regulated in Minnesota because what we're doing right now isn't working. We have four gambling regulators in Minnesota, the Racing Commission, the Gambling Control Board, the Lottery, the Alcohol and Gambling Division of the Department of Public Safety. That's a fragmented regulatory structure which is leading to contradiction and con controversy. That, Madam Chair, I know there are a number of testifiers and I think maybe we can fit in one or two. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we're actually at 2.50 right now, so um, in, instead of letting one person try to get their two minutes in before we have to leave for our uh, caucuses on the floor session, I think we should just recess now. Um, so everyone in, um, in the audience can um, look, for, if you've signed up to testify, you will get an email um, about when we will return um, after the floor session today. And then um, if you don't currently get the, those emails and you're not signed up to testify, there is a subscribe button on the committee website where you can um, ensure that you will receive uh, Mr. Brown's email um, later on this, this evening. So um, thank you so much for your time and we look forward to seeing you later. We are in recess. <laughs>